In this video, we'll be looking at the arrangement of the Siemens Type 2 Surge Arrestor system as installed in this three-phase distribution panel. This panel is not yet complete, with field installation work still ongoing, so it was a good opportunity to get in and check the arrangement. First, we had to locate the SPD device, which should be connected to the closest point to the incoming supply. This was located to the left-hand side of the main incomer. The SPD device itself is supplied via three inline fuses, rated in this case at 100 amps. The unit itself comprises three separate modules, one for each of the three phases coming in. Each of the individual modules can be removed and replaced as required. We decided to do an inspection of each of the modules and compare it against the Siemens datasheet. The information on the side turned out to be more extensive than what was on the datasheet. It detailed the peak current the unit could take and the peak voltage the unit could withstand as well. Each module was compared against the others to make sure it was in good condition and of the same type and rating. The modules were then replaced so we could begin some initial tests. The cable connections for the PE, L1, L2 and L3 phases was checked. On the front of the module, you'll see there's two voltages indicated. The first being the system voltage and the second one being the voltage at which the unit should pass current to protect itself from over voltages. Even though the paddle is actually dead, we decided to conduct this test as if it could potentially be live. The control system was disconnected. This indicates whether one of the units has failed or not. We installed the fluke proving unit on the back plate of the panel and tested the electrical meter. Once we proved that the meter was operational, we then checked each phase in turn down to the earth connection. Following this, we checked between each phase, L1 to L2, L1 to L3, and L2 to L3. Once we proved there was no voltage on the system, we then reproved the tester. Firstly, we want to check that the PE connection down to the panel main earth bar is in good condition. So the first test we want to do is a low resistance test. The meter itself shows that the unit is calibrated and the test leads have been compensated for. By pressing this menu button, it gives us a picture of how to connect the test leads. Firstly, we want to check that the test leads have been correctly compensated for. So the live, the neutral and the earth are connected together and a test is undertaken. The reading R plus and R minus is 0, 0 with the overall result of 0, 0.0 ohms. So the test leads are compensated for. The actual test we want to do is between the PE connection on the main earth bar and the pen connector on the, on the unit itself. We've got a reading of 0, 0.14 ohms. So we're happy with that. Now we can actually move on to doing the Varista test. On this meter, we have the option for selecting single test, insulation resistance test, and a VAR Varista test. There are options for setting the earthing system, the voltage and the current you want to pass in that menu. So we selected it for one milliamp for this earthing system and applied it first between the L1 and the earth connection. The meter itself starts to ramp up the voltage and it indicates at what point it conducts one milliamp down to earth. You have the option as well for setting and recording the results. The next test we did was the L2 phase. Again, the meter ramps up the voltage slowly 
until one milliamp is passed, in this case at the equivalent of 319 volts AC. And the final test on the last phase applied a DC voltage of 512 volts, giving us an AC equivalent of 320 volts. We wanted now to compare what the module would do if it was removed from the base. So we conducted the varista tests again on each individual module. Again on this meter we selected single test, insulation resistance and varista. There is an option to press to show you the connections in case you forgot. Once we're happy, we then start the test off. We obviously don't want the Varista to pass any current near its normal operating voltage of 240 volts, but we do want it to start passing the transient spikes down as they reach a magnitude of 350 volts. In this case, it appears that it starts conducting at about 320 volts. Each module was checked in turn and compared against the original results as it was installed. So all the modules gave very similar results. We were happy with the results. So the modules were reinstalled back into the panel. The signal indication cable was reconnected and the inline fuses closed up again. That concluded this test. If you're interested in finding out more about the industrial electrical environment, please subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for new videos.